Hey guys, how's here bringing you another video. Now, welcome back to the Climb to Master, the series that I go on my main account and attempt to climb to master. Uh, now, we return Diamond 1 34 LP, and it, it's going okay. We went down to zero, and now we're starting to climb back up. Again, it always happens. Um, but yeah, things are going all right. Apparently, somebody, and again, I'm just going to point this out in the bottom left. I really dislike these type of people. Please let me top lane and then links to op.gg. I'm going to be honest, I really don't care. Uh, I got the top lane role. I don't play support, therefore I ain't gonna do that. If you're that type of person that links your op.gg, don't expect people to be nice to you, really. Like the, the thing that, again, people don't really get is we're in the same game. Like, why would they Why would they expect people to give up a role by linking an op.gg when you're in the same game as me? That just doesn't make sense. Um, also, I, I don't really like that. These two are obviously pre-made. I don't even like their attitude, like... That's even another thing that I, I kind of dislike too. But, oh well, I'm going to go top and hopefully do okay. Um, somebody was pointing out the other day in the comments, they were like, so do you have any differences between when you're recording and when you're not recording in how you play? Uh, yeah, I think I'll talk about that a little bit. I may as well just talk about it now a bit too, um, while the bands and everything is going off. Um, the big thing that that's different when I'm recording and all this type of thing is when I'm not recording i either carry or feed and when i am recording i usually just do fine i do neutral i don't feed but i don't carry the reason for that is when i'm recording obviously i'm a little bit more conscious that people are watching it's like oh god i gotta be careful you know blah 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 blah. why didn't that guy pick him oh well um but i've got to be a little bit more careful um why, why am i gonna pick so I'm gonna keep uploading this, and this is why uh, this is this is like high rating EU West because toxicity is amazing up here. I am gonna mute people like this because it's just people that are a little bit unstable, probably. All right, I'm gonna go Camille. Why not have some fun? Um, but at least again, whenever I upload and like highlight people that are like this. At least the world gets to see them, to be honest. That's something that I enjoy. Because they right now think they're completely anonymous and like, oh, I can be toxic and nobody will know. Well, currently there's thousands of people watching you be toxic. So, yeah. Okay, so Camille, she's fun. She does actually have a negative win rate. Like, actually quite a bad win rate. The reason for it, I think, though, is because people... It's it's the same as the concept like Azir or something like that. Azir has a negative win rate for the longest time, but he got nerfed even when he had a terrible win rate. The reason for it is because there are different skill ratings on different champions. If you're a bad Azir, you're going to lose every single game. If you're a good Azir back in the day when he before he was nerfed a lot, you'd just win every game. He was nearly impossible to beat. And I think... Camille might follow that a little bit, potentially. I think she's very good if you're personally good at her. Um, but I also think if you're bad at her, I think you're just going to lose a lot of games. So hopefully we'll be able to make her work. Um, she currently has... I'm trying to see. Um, the best win rate she has is a 59% win rate for people that have between 15 and 50 games on her. So that's a good win rate. That's what I mean. Like, the win rate does go up the more games people play on her, so that at least that's good. Her worst lane is against a Jace. Uh, her best lane is against Poppy, but even that, her best lane only has a 52% win rate. That's that's still pretty bad. Uh, we're against, I think, a Mordekaiser? Does this have the data on Mord? Nope, it doesn't. I uh, probably have don't, don't have enough games for a Mordekaiser. Also, people are probably screaming, Huzz, you've got the wrong thingies. Just noticed. And we got that. All right, cool. No panic. Uh, so yeah, without much further ado, unfortunately I'm going to play with like these toxic people, but I'll probably just mute and let's get in the loading screen where we break, break down today's game. Okay, welcome to the loading screen. This is where I use the website lolskill.net. Now as you can see, the enemy team have a slight percentage to win, which is a 51.3, but let's break it down. We have a Diamond 2 Varus, a Diamond 1 a Syndra, a Diamond 1 Alistair, Diamond 3 Shaco, and a Diamond 1 Camille as myself. Uh, on the enemy team, a Diamond 1 Thresh, Diamond 2 Kha'Zix, a Diamond 2 more, Diamond 3 Jin, and a Master LeBlanc. And what I would say, if you did watch the, the, the opening, the people that were being toxic, and I, again... I say all the time, stereotypes, they exist for a reason. The two really big toxic ego people, obviously the Syndra was a little bit toxic too, but a Shaco player, and you can see there, a Riven player. Like, I don't know what it is with these types of people, these types of champions, but they bring out the worst in people. I have no idea why, but yeah. Also, just to kind of add, if she's going, oh, give me top and then links her OP.gg, 
she has roughly the same amount of games that I do, so why would I ever give that up? That also doesn't really make sense. But anyway, uh, the Blanc, I will say it's going to be annoying if she ends up carrying, considering that my mid laner did ask the guy to, to pick it for him. Maybe he doesn't own it, maybe he does, uh, because that LeBlanc looks to be pretty good on her. So without much further ado, let's get into the game where we are playing Camille Top. Okay, welcome to the games. Today we are playing Camille top lane. I have fiddled around with this champ a little bit on a smurf, so that's why I'm playing her today. And she was open. Um, but the first thing I, you'll notice straight away, I muted the pre made I just can't be bothered with those type of players. They live up to the stereotype of their champion. I'll say if you would do main, Shaco, Riven, etc., try to break that stereotype. Try not to add to it, because people that are a Shaco player or a Riven player that get really annoyed by all these toxic, it's like, I'm not toxic, I'm a Riven player, I'm not toxic, I'm fine, stop calling Riven players toxic. This is what you have to deal with, is someone like this Alistair. So as, do everything that you personally can, if you're that type of player, that are Riven, blah, blah, blah. Try to break the stereotype yourself. And that's all really you can do. Because, yeah, it's a little bit incredible sometimes. Uh, I will say she was obviously slightly toxic as well, but I'm not going to mute her yet. Obviously, it's still bad, but I don't think she'll be toxic unless these two kick off. Which, again, isn't a great excuse, but still. Right, so just to kind of point out, which I didn't in the loading screen, we're against a Mord top. He's also gone Exhaust, so Mordekaiser, he's kind of a weaker champion, but he can still do well. And the biggest reason why he can do well is he gets... Um, underestimated people think he's trash he does no damage and then suddenly he'll kill you uh he it's surprising but he can do that so we're gonna have to be careful a little bit in the 1v1 but i'd say moving into mid late game i think we'll be perfectly fine um thresh is trying his best to screw up that i guess so that's a nice slow um he's probably just gonna push in i'd imagine Whenever he goes for a trade on me, I actually probably should... Hmm. What cooldown is the E on? See, that's another problem with playing like something like this, like um, against something that's never really played, is I don't know a lot about that champion. So, obviously, I know what a Mordekaiser does, but I don't know... I don't know his cooldowns or anything, so it's going to be really difficult to actually properly lane against him when you don't know actually that much information about him. Uh, you can also see the name of the person is the Cheese God. Yes, Mordekaiser is a Cheese top laner. Because he's pretty much get ahead or do nothing. Basically. Who's their jungler? Kha'Zix. Did I just hit a minion? Oh my god, I think I just hit a minion. If I didn't hit a minion, I think he would be close to death and Shaco could probably finish him off. dead. Or not. Mm. I guess Mordekaiser's shield did more than we anticipated. I forgot he had exhaust, I'm going to be honest. Damn, I forgot he had exhaust. And obviously we've got the two pre-maids that are raging. And I'm kind of expecting them to just be rages the whole game. Damn, that's disappointing. That hook. Oh, why does he have exhaust? That's so sucky for me. I guess I'll just have to try and scale to mid-game. Because I think I'll outscale him, but we'll see. Balls. a problem with some people going exhaust in top lane by the way i will say it's a good thing that he's going exhaust as a mordekaiser there are certain champions if you're going top lane that you need to try and get ahead mordekaiser is 100 percent one of these champions it's the same with like if you go quinn top never take teleport on quinn top like take ignite you need to get ahead renekton is turning into that because he obviously falls off a lot in the late game so that's why people take ignite on him but there, there's a number of champions that you want to go more aggressive in summoner spell because if you don't you're gonna struggle but obviously, yes, then you'd be regarded more as a cheese top laner because it's an all-in. Um, if you don't get ahead, then you're probably not going to do a lot. But if you do get ahead, you have the potential to carry. Whoa. 
Whoa. That was a lot. See, now that he's ahead, he can just have, like, the shield. And, um... Yeah. The shield, that just out-trades me. And then out-damages me because he's ahead as well. So that's kind of annoying to deal with. But it is what it is. She's dead. Should I go a hex drinker first item? I'm trying to think. Probably. He's gonna go one he's gonna wanna try and snowball off me, so. I we probably will go a hex drinker. And then try force after that. Bot lane oh god, they're behind a lot too. Every lane is losing right now. They both flash. Not the most synergy of the enemy bot lane, to be honest, but... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, hopefully I can still be uh, a cheerful commentary. I don't know. Toxic people just kind of put me in a pretty bad mood. Because I just don't understand how they can be toxic. And it's even worse when it's a DOQ as well. But, I don't know. It does seem that toxic to that toxicity comes in pairs. If one person in a pre-made is uh, toxic, the other person will be. And the thing is, I don't even know if they know they're toxic. That's the weird thing. Like, I don't know if people are self-aware. Because I know sometimes people get banned and go, I'm not toxic. And then they get resent the log of what they said. And like, oh god, I said those things. And it's an eye-opener. But, yeah, I don't know. I think it's warded. See, I'm pretty good versus LeBlanc because I can keep her in, like, me. So as long as we can kill her in the time that she stays in my ultimate, it's pretty much a free kill because she can't W away. Also, the same with Maud. If, if Kha'Zix doesn't come top, it should be a relatively free kill on Maud because he has no escape anyway. And, um... Yeah. Yeah, definitely try not to get hit by that third Q, because that's where a lot of his oops, damage comes into play. And Kha'Zix is in his jungle. <laughs> that little heal. Like, they knew Kha'Zix was in there, and they still died. Maybe they'll be... Nope. LeBlanc got there first. What was it? It was a 2 4 1. Yeah. God, the scoreline at the moment is 6 and 1. That's not the good, especially that we have a Shaco. That doesn't do more damage than I thought. He's probably going back to buy. He's going to go the um, Hextech Gunblade first item because it will be amazingly in good in trading against me. Because, again, it gives him auto attack damage. It gives him a slow with the the actual active of it. It's literally a perfect item for Maud. Wait, he didn't go to buy? Alright, I can buy my Hex Drinker, which will give me survivability in the 1v1. It won't really give me survivability versus the Kha'Zix, but any survivability that I can get, which will allow me to go more aggressive, is what I exactly want. Because I, I kind of need to go aggressive in this lane. I don't want him just to have a free lane phase. I'll say, if we get late game, I'm still pretty confident if we get late game, as long as Shaco can be useful. If Shaco isn't useful, then we pretty much lose, but if he is, and he can, like, if he can pick the Jin or something while he's ulting... I think we win. Mm, Dragon is in play right now, so it's like, do I just push top lane and hope that he's down that end? 
because I don't know exactly where Kha'Zix would be right now. I haven't been keeping track of the jungle. There he is, okay. See, Maud came up this way and then decided against it. He is still a little bit scared of me in the 1v1. He's not going to just randomly walk into me. Can we take him out? Nope. <coughs> oh, this is warded. <coughs> Think they're missing. Can't out trade that. Damn, I thought I could. The long spot again. Really low health. Mm. Nice. Just waiting for that. It's good that I can bait that out when I wasn't even going to go for an all in means if he stays now, now I go for an all-in because he doesn't have ult. I doubt he'll stay after blowing that though, to be honest. This is this looks good if Shaker can get one or two of them. But he just used Q to get over the wall, so probably can't do anything. Unless they stay in that bush. Um, I don't know. This game might be okay. It's just in the early game. We got owned. Never mind, Shaco overstayed for no reason. Oh, he's got Gunblade now. I can buy my Sheen, which will give me Burst against him, which I think I kind of need Burst against the Mord, because I don't think I'm going to kill him in any other way. He's going to get a lot of tower damage. Even the tower might die. There's nothing I can do about that. I have to go back. Goodbye, tower. But yeah, if you're against somebody with a combat ability, expect a uh, summoner, I mean. Expect your tower probably to go down first. Again, that's the reason why they've taken that ability. What you're hoping is that you will outscale them in late game with the teleport. So with him having exhaust, it forces him to group in the late game. Which obviously, I want to group in the late game, but it means that I could go push a, a minion wave uh, in the late game. And then get that pushing and then teleport to go help my team. Where he can't do that. He If he goes to push a minion wave, he's then basically stuck there and has to run and he can't go help his team straight away where i can so that's the big difference between obviously a combat ability and thingy it's just depending if we can make use of that um but we'll see okay someone's here there's Maud. Yeah, he's got his full shield um yeah, he didn't get caught good. Jin's pretty low health. I'm half expecting a Kha'Zix here, by the way. Got it again. Uh, Ka there's Kha'Zix. Literally, it's not very hard to predict where these people are. Kind of obvious. Where else would he be on the map? Oh, he should be getting punished, but he's not. I presume the Shaco is a bit too ragey to come back to top lane. I need also that my Mercs. Hmm. LeBlanc's roaming again. All she's really doing is roaming. Oh, that heal. Hmm. 
Nothing I can do to him in the 1v1. Which is really annoying right now. We could kill him though. I think he's a relatively free kill. But nobody's come since the first gank really. Which is a bit annoying. If she dies I'm going to be really sad. Yep, I told her about it, and she still doesn't pay attention. Ooh, dear. Damn it. I really want to go, like, roam. I've been trapped in this top lane for the whole game. Not the best feeling as a Camille, I'm going to be honest. Um... So he's going to go... Oh, Kha'Zix is still top. Like, this is why I can't do anything. I can try to fight him in the 1v1, but then I'm always scared Kha'Zix is top because he's actually been top lane or near top lane quite a lot this game. Because he's probably scared that the Maud will die eventually or he just wants to punish a Camille. Because it's just stopping me do anything this game. Because one, it's the combat uh, summoner. Secondly, it's the jungle pressure. Both of them add them together. Equals I do nothing. I still think Kha'Zix is a round top lane. He just looped around. Like, Jesus Christ, that damage. I'm not going to get help, though. Kazix is coming, yeah. Alistair wasn't looking, I guess. I think uh, Kazix is here. Yep. Still not really getting help. I'm dead. I don't get why they're purely ignoring top lane. I don't get it. I really don't get it. The rage is overtaking winning the game. Well, I guess that's what rage always does, but still. See, like, he's a Mordekaiser. If, and if it's a 2v1 situation in the open, there's nothing a Mordekaiser can do. It's just really disappointing. But there's no, then, on the flip side of that, there's nothing I can do in a 1v1. Um, because one, he's got, as I mentioned, he's got a combat spell, he's already been put ahead, and the, the jungler's had more pressure in the lane than my jungler. Add them all together, I haven't been able to do anything in the 1v1. It's just really annoying. And then my team just ignores the top lane, and it's just like, okay, great, awesome. And then <laughs> they nearly got the inhib tower, like... I don't get people, man. I really don't get people. I pressed the wrong way. What the hell? Never let your rage... If you are somebody that does rage, which again, I don't really know how, but if you are somebody that does rage, don't let your rage basically let you become the Hulk. Basically an idiot <laughs> that stops you winning the game of League. Sure, be angry about it if you need to be, I guess, but don't let that take the win away from you. Because that's just being an idiot. There's nothing I can do. He's too far ahead for me even to try to attempt anything in the 1v1. So. It's like, if I go and group, this goes. They're too fed. 604 Kha'Zix comparing to a 1 4 Shaker. Feels good, man. I might just start grouping. There's nothing else I can do. No one's going top lane anyway, so why should I? Hey, I go roam once and I get a kill straight away. Hmm. <sighs>
People came and killed this guy. It's just ugh. I got my phage. I still think late game we might have a chance. It's just like we're giving them too much in the early game or early mid game. Which is the problem. And like I said, I think a lot of this game is going to depend, depend on how useful the Shaco is. If he's useful, then great. If he's not, which again, I'm not expecting him to be overly useful. Um, we won't really do much. I don't think. Because what I'm scared of... Are oh, they two-man Baron? What I'm scared of is... Um, Shaco will just get one shot no matter what he tries. He'll go and try and assassinate someone. Boom, dead. But yeah, I just don't know. The complete... The thing that annoys me in this game, and I know I've said it already, but sometimes I just vent... You know, this is how I deal with stuff. I just vent it. I say it out loud. Is the complete disregard for top lane because of the guy was raging. Like, that is the reason. There's no other reason why he wouldn't have come top lane other than he was just raging out. And it's not like he was doing well around the the rest of the map. It's just like, just a complete disregard for just wanting to win the game. See, if I go roam, this goes. It's probably dead anyway, but... And flash. He should be dead, but the tower's gone. But yeah, I don't know. Nothing I can do in, in the 1v1 anymore. Also with Baron buff. Also with exhaust. It's just depressing, dude. Uh. So they're fed one. The thing is, they are a relatively squishy team. And we do have a Syndra. And a Varus. Even though the Varus is negative. Well, we're all negative about the Syndra. Is that we do have good damage versus squishies. It's just, does, do they do too much damage is the question. But maybe, we'll see. We'll see. It's just now this is open, so you know where they're going to go next. And nobody will come to help defend it, because <laughs> that's the way this game's gone. Is that the clone? Oh, boy. Dead. There's nothing I can do to him. Literally. He's got even dead mans. He just runs. Alice is just raging out. Again, I kind of expect him to. But it's just depressing. Whoa. That was pretty good. This is a mess, holy moly. Don't think he'll get a kill. Hey, got one. And we got aced. Probably worth surrendering if it's... Okay, it's not a surrender apparently. <laughs> Why are you raging out? Well, like, what? Oh boy. Oh my god, someone help me. Oh my god, we're killing him because it's a Mordekaiser and we grouped on him. Oh my god, who would have thought that would happen? That could happen, by the way, this whole lane phase if someone just came. Again, Mordekaiser's strength is being not CC'd, which I don't really have much CC, so I don't really counter him that much. But it's getting CC'd, and like he's like an Alawi, basically. Just chain CC him and kill him while he can do nothing. But in a 1v1, I can't do that. And look what happened in the whole game. It just it just frustrates me. It's really, really, really irritating when people let their rage take over from winning the game.
Alright. Um, I guess I just should go tank now, really. I don't have my tier map, but I don't think I can really build one. Um, so yeah, maybe I'm just going to buy Zerup Portal. I know it's a stupid item on Camille, but in theory, like, it'll help me push. And I think that's what we need right now. Look, he doesn't do anything when we're grouped. Oh my god, it's like this. I know League of Legends. Gotta go behind me, Syndra. Can't protect you. If, he, if I'm standing still, you have no excuse of dying. That's annoying that she died. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna go this. I know some people are like, oh, he's building a GA. No, I'm gonna buy the Zerot just to give me pushing power because they've got an inhibitor. So at least it will help push against it, which in theory will help a little bit to pressure. I don't know, this game's just a little bit annoying. Yeah, they'll probably try two mana again. Because this is what I mean. If I had Zerot Portal right here, I could leave the Zerot Portal and deal with it. Or at least slow this down. And then I could look to... I'm on my way. Yeah, they got caught. If they didn't get caught, it would have been okay. Damn it. Like, Syndra even got caught without even using her ultimate, by the way. Damn. We might have been able to hold on, but... Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'll see what you guys make of it in the comment section. I don't think I was wrong in what my thoughts were this this game. Uh, again, sometimes uh, my thoughts change when I watch the video back myself, but I don't think so. I think that we just had the ragey duo queue, that he came top lane once in the first game. That obviously didn't work. And then I made a mistake, and I will openly admit, I made a mistake for getting he had exhaust, and then he killed me. Then he just didn't come top lane the rest of the game. And then Kha'Zix came and had pressure. He didn't gank a lot of the Kha'Zix, but he was always around. That I was just spotting him. And then Maud with a combat ability also got ahead. I couldn't do anything in a 1v1. And he was a relatively easy target. Like Maud is not a, not a hard target to kill at all in a 2v1. Because of that, it just was... That happened. And then on top of that, the rest of the map lost anyway. So it wasn't just like I lost this game in the top lane. It also was the rest of the map with the toxic duo queue. So... I don't know. I don't get it. But anyway, we went three, four, five. We got an A minus. That's actually surprising. And damage done. I'm expecting the more to do a lot. Okay, so Syndra, then Varus. I did less than Shaker, which isn't surprising. And then those three kind of did the most. The Blanc actually doing the least out of the four of them. But I guess she's just like a one hit person. That would probably explain that. But yeah, disappointing. Again, sometimes I like uploading these when we have crazy toxic people. Because it just highlights that this happens even in the top 0.4% of the game. This is literally the top, this is less than the top 1% of the game. You still get people like this. So if it happens here, it can happen anywhere. So if you did enjoy, throw a like on it, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time.